Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you what I'm calling a Morgan's Midge variant. So the original Morgan's Midge was a pretty well kept secret, uh, worked really well on uh, western tailwaters, and somebody let the cat out of the bag somewhere in the early 2000s, but we figured out this fly works pretty well here in the east on our spring creeks. So I'm going to do my version on a Daiichi 1180 size 20. I'm going to use this Bonnie cord that I picked up at the uh, craft store. And in these two colors, I'm going to use the gray kind of for wing and uh, I'm going to do a furled extended abdomen with the, uh, the amber colored. I'm going to add some pheasant tail fibers for legs and hold it all together with some black uni thread. In fact, the black uni thread will be part of the body as well, that black tube that um, kind of runs through the center of these tiny bugs. So we'll get the uh, thread started on the hook and go back a little ways, and snip off the excess. And here, what I learned is uh, that cord is um, braided and if you pull out one of the sections of braid and split it in half and then on this size 20 I, I pulled out just a few more fibers I made it a little smaller than half of one of those uh, strands from the braid so I tied it in I left some hang forward I'm going to use that for uh, um, kind of an extended fuzzy feature that sticks out over the eye of the hook uh, if you look at a real midge sometimes they have that so I gave uh, that cord sticking out the back a twist. I uh, used my needle to kind of uh, mark my bodkin to mark the location of where I wanted it to fold and fiddled with it a little bit just to uh, get it in place and tie it down. So here we're just going to wrap forward and, and make what the, again, on the midges, they have a black, uh, kind of a black tube for a body. And uh, there I left two different lengths so I can lift up the, uh, the upper piece of that, that cord and snip off the excess. So I only moved about halfway back forward and that's where I want to snip off the, uh, the second leg of that, that cord that was our furled abdomen. So here I apologize, I forgot to hit record, but I took a brown marker and I darkened the top of the abdomen. So if I had a producer, I'd have somebody to yell at. So I'm going to wrap forward. I'm going to try and keep that other strand, uh, those fibers from the uh, cord on top. And again, if you look at the uh, actual pictures of midges, they have some uh, appendages that stick out of, uh, you know, from the front of their head that are kind of fuzzy. And uh, I think that's what I'm trying for here. But this helps the fly float as well. So another feature, if you look at those midges, they have long legs. Um, you can bend these or tie these in any direction you want. I like to wash them back like this, kind of angle them back. So I'm fiddling around here. This is between the camera and this is close quarters and it's smaller than it looks. That's a size 20 hook. So um, it takes a little fiddling to get these in place, but uh, I think under ordinary circumstances, if you weren't reaching around cameras and lenses and lights, and, uh, I think this would, uh, wouldn't would be as hard as I make it look. But there I got about three on each side trapped down. And basically, I kind of want them on the bottom or toward the bottom. And I want them to extend past the bend of the hook or, or probably just past the bend of the hook. So wind back a little bit, and that's where we ended our uh, abdomen when we came across the top. And I'm going to roll them around a little bit, try and make sure everything ended up toward the bottom. So snip off the excess. I missed one. We'll just break him off. Probably could have just done that for each of those. And we're going to come in with the same thing, a little less than half of a strand of uh, the gray macrame cord. Wrap forward a little bit and then wrap back over it. And I can't tell you exactly how many fibers. You, you'll get a feel for it. You want to adjust it so that uh, um, 
you know, based on the size hook you have and the size fly you're trying to tie. This is probably about a size 18 fly on a size 20 hook, more or less, but... So there, we whip finish. We got that little bulbous black head on this thing. I'll uh, slice off my thread and a little snip snip and we're all done here. So I want to leave this about two eye lengths long. I cut it off square, but I don't want to leave it that way. I want it th this to kind of have a shape or a taper to it. So I came in, snipped it on angle. And then for the wings, same thing. I like to angle them back towards and I'm kind of going for about three quarters the length of the abdomen. And I don't know. This is uh, this should catch a lot of fishermen. It looks pretty buggy to me. Now I've used other materials to make similar flies, and and I have caught fish on them, but uh, not with this macrame cord, macrame cord version yet, and uh, not with a furled body. I think the original uh, Morgan's Midge had a. Um, kind of a clear braid or, or something similar that they used and singe the end and use that for the uh, shock. In this case, I'm not sure if that represents an abdomen or a shock, but uh, uh, in any case, I uh, I think it's going to fool a few fish. So we'll make sure that the eye's clean. We put a little head cement on it, and we'll give you a close-up and do a spin. And I see some wild hairs I could have snipped to make it look prettier for the camera, but I'm pretty sure the fish won't care. So um, I'm going to put a few of these in my box. Maybe you do the same. And I hope it helps you out. I hope you catch some fish with it. Thanks for watching till the end. And if you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon.com. Until next time, be safe.